What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to Dear Glory. Today, I'm super excited to share some incredible artists you may not have heard of. As art collectors and enthusiasts, it can be really tough to know which artists are actually worth paying attention to, right? And that's beyond investment. That's just paying attention to. It's such a crowded marketplace. There are so many talented individuals out there. Look, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos on art collecting and emerging artists. In this video, I'm gonna introduce you to amazing artists at different stages of their career. Some are just starting out, others might already be making significant accomplishments, and these artists offer really unique and meaningful works that fit within a variety of budgets. By the end of this video, I promise you'll have a curated list of artists to watch, a little bit of inside analysis, and it'll keep you ahead of what's going out on out there in the art world. And the confidence to make decisions about these artists are the confidence to look further into these artists if you choose to do so. Now, I wanna give you a quick disclaimer. I'm not promising these artists are gonna blow up. I have been the predictor of quite a few artists that have done so, but I cannot promise that. What I do hope is that this video helps push them forward, even the ones that are already doing really well, and I'm sharing them because I love their work. I see their dedication. And I know others are loving what they're doing as well. So let's go ahead and get into it and explore these credible talents. First up, I wanna get into the world of this emerging, maybe even mid-career artist, Blake Daniels. An artist whose work I feel is as mesmerizing as it is emotionally powerful. Blake's really unique blend of figuration of abstraction is creating this kind of visual experience that's thought provoking as well as deeply personal. Blake Daniels work reminds me of a heat map. I don't know if you guys are seeing that, but it reminds me of a heat map. I've really always been drawn to heat maps for some reason. I can't really pinpoint why, but they represent this proof of life and this proof of movement. I'm really also loving the colors that he's choosing to complement this heat-like sensation, creating this vibrancy that's captivating, whether you can make out the figures or not. His artwork not only captures the essence of motion and energy, but it also evokes this emotional response through these vivid and dynamic palettes. He notes that his subjects are drawn from his intimate circle, which are primarily queer figures, and instead of using overt visual clues, Blake is capturing the essence of these individuals by working from memory. This technique is allowing him to kind of evoke that sensation, the emotion that he associates them rather than them themselves. When you're looking at his work, you're feeling the presence of these figures, even though they may not actually be there in the clearest form. When you're looking at these figures, you might feel like that they're blurry or they're in a sense very abstract or kind of far away. Blake's ability to blend figuration with abstraction is nothing short of why his work is as mesmerizing and magical as it is. These dynamic lines and these organic shapes are creating this fantastical atmosphere while his rich textures and his layers are inviting you and to explore the depth of the paintings. The vibrant and the often unexpected color palettes he's employing enhances this emotional impact. It's drawing the viewer in and the audience into his world. During his journey, he has explored the complexities of queer identities. His work steers clear of overt political markers, opting instead for, I would say, a more nuanced approach that's digging more into his personal narratives, whatever cultural histories he may have. He's opting instead for, I would say, a more nuanced approach that's gonna dig more into his personal narratives, the narratives that are around him and whatever cultural histories he or they may have. This is gonna allow the viewers to connect with deeper stories and the emotions behind his personal life, his personal stories, and his personal work. He was born in 1990 in Cincinnati, Ohio, but Blake now splits his time between parents, France, and Johannesburg, South Africa. He holds a BA in Fine Arts from the School of Art Institute of Chicago, one of my favorites. You guys know how I love people that come from the School of Institute of Chicago. And he has a Master's of Fine Arts from the University of Watersbrand in Johannesburg. I think I said that right. Blake has received so many accolades, including the Edward L. Ryers and Fellowship and the Rima Hartman and Furtership Emerging Artist Grant. Blake's resume includes solo exhibitions like Those Who Remember at Mile Projects in Hong Kong, and the Confession of the Rain at Cadet Capella in Paris. His group exhibition spanned the globe with shows like Full and Pure at the Green Family Art Foundation in Dallas, Texas, right up the street from me, and The Oyster Is Your World at Coma in Sydney. Next, I wanna talk about the emerging artist, Aaliyah Bonet. Bonet, Bonet, 
I think it's Bonet. My family's from Louisiana, so I'm gonna hit with Bonet. An artist I have recently become a really big fan of, but I haven't had too many conversations with many people about her work. I've never spoken to her um, personally. This is just from quite a big of a dig that I've done, just really getting and digging into her work. Um, Aaliyah's quilt inspired creations are not just visually stunning, they're deeply rooted in her personal history and her own personal cultural significance. Her work is a heartfelt tribute to her ancestors, especially her grandmothers, and is vividly capturing the complexities of black womanhood. What's really captivating me about her work is how she's intertwining her present with the legacies of her grandmothers and her ancestors. Her work is standing as a touching homage to their lives, their stories, and their lasting influence in her life, and I'm sure her family's life as well. Each time I experience her artwork, which I've never done so a person, I'm reminded of my own connection to my own grandmothers. This blend of improvisational quilting and painting it stirs these emotions and these memories connecting me to my past, to my own grandmothers, so my mother's clothes. It repels me to just connect to the lives of my mother and my grandmothers and their grandmothers and to honor their stories and their contributions. Aaliyah's work is just giving us this moment to pause and celebrate the strength and the resilience of those that have come before us and those that we know we need to honor. Her work is heavily influenced by her grandmother and her late ancestors, who she lovingly refers to as her kindred. Her works are incredibly emotional, just connecting viewers to these rich intergenerational stories of women. Often her work is featuring herself and the women around her, adding this personal and intimate touch that's speaking volumes about her journey and her identity. Each work is feeling like a window into her soul and the soul of those around her, allowing us to share in her exploration of herself and her heritage. She discovered this, this technique of improvisational um, quilting at 20 years old, which is connecting her to her grandmother's quilting legacy, but also to the historical significance of quilting in the Underground Railroad. Quilting often combined to painting to create this dynamic interplay between textures and custards. The fabric from the unfinished quilt from her from her grandmother is providing this tangible link to her past, this living entity to her heritage. Aaliyah's themes revolve around blackness, femininity, and sexuality, exploring these concepts beyond the violence and beyond the hypersexualization that black people and black women often face. Her figures are often depicted in these vulnerable yet in powerful states, occupying these comfortable environments where they can reveal who they really are, them true selves. This portrayal often challenges this imposed standards of race, of gender, of sexuality um, among Aaliyah, but not just Aaliyah, among her figures to reclaim their space, to reclaim their identities as women and people and their narratives. By incorporating her grandmother's fabrics and her, and her grandmother's unfinished quilts, she's bridging the past and the present, creating this dialogue between generations of black women. Her art is challenging traditional representations and provides a space for black women to reclaim their stories and their identities. It's a celebration of that resurgence and of their heritage and the enduring of her kindred. She graduated with a BFA from East Carolina University in 2021. She has participated in many exhibitions, including the Threads We Follow as Second Contemporary and a, and a group exhibition at North Carolina Museum of Art. If you want to learn more about art, I was so interested in her work. I did a bit of a market breakdown in my Patreon. So if you want to take a look at that, along with a curated list of more artists, in addition to this list that we're talking about right now, go over to my Patreon. The link is in my description. Also, you guys can download my collector's checklist, which is also in my description, which should help guide you through your collecting journey if you're having a little bit of trouble. Even if you're not, just download it anyway. Take a look at it. It could carry around with you when you're trying to make a decision on a work you're, you're thinking about collecting. Next up, I want to talk about an artist who you may not or who may not be new to you, but is definitely new to me. He's established artist, I would say, maybe even mid-career. His name is Wendell Gladstone. His work struck me immediately with these vivid, magical qualities and the unique positions of his figures. I fell in love with this work as soon as I seen it. It was actually no question that I would involve his work in this video a long time ago. Wendell's art is captivating and is thought provoking. He blends allegory and metaphors into figures, into these figures and objects to examine a wide range of cultural references to art history, to contemporary politics, and personal experiences. I can't really pinpoint the style that 
his work is evoking. I wish I could remember the name of their style, but I'm irresistibly drawn to the way that he's placing his figures compositionally. It's peculiar. They would be uncomfortable in real life, which in part is adds a sense of realism to the work. I love how he's using like this sand-like or even maybe this concrete-like material in the background to subtly convey this additional symbolism um, and, and the way that these figures are interacting with one another as an element it has an element of fun to the work even when the narrative is is carrying a, a serious or historical contone the work still reads as fun Gladstone has been having a really successful career so far so if you're looking to get in really early he might not be the one to to be discovering right now um, at the early stage, but he is certainly an artist worth knowing and appreciating and looking into collecting his work if you're enjoying it and if you can. Over the past decade, Wendell has produced figurative paintings that have evoked surreal spaces free from the logic that typically governs representation. His subconscious is guiding the narratives, creating these scenes that are rich in, like we spoke about earlier, symbolism and layered with meaning. His use of a bright, often candy-colored palettes often Paired with transparent mediums is creating this visually captivating experience. The initial allure of his vibrant colors is drawing the viewers in, but it's the depth and the complexity of his subjects that's evoking this strong emotional response. These figures are always depicted in these awkward compromising positions, which adds in an element of vulnerability and rawness to his work. The vulnerability is resonating with the viewer, allowing them to connect on an emotional level. His work is speaking to audiences by blending these personal experiences with the broader cultural references. He uses allegory and metaphor to examine things such as power dynamics in human psyche and societal struggles. His paintings are serving as his visual dialogue, encouraging viewers to reflect on their own experiences and the world that's around them. His paintings are often exploring the struggles between hierarchy and psychological tension that exists within societies, offering this commentary on contemporary issues through the lens of these historical and these cultural narratives. He's drawn from this diverse range of influences while addressing these contemporary issues in a nuanced and thought-provoking manner. His work seems to be well regarded in the art community and it's been featured in solo and group exhibitions worldwide. His paintings have been written about by major publications such as Art Forum, Art in America, and the New York Times, further cementing his reputation. While specific valuations can really vary, he seems to have established a pretty good presence in the art world. Wendell Gladstone was born in 1972 in Boston, Massachusetts, but currently lives and works in Los Angeles, California. He holds a BA from Brown University and an MFA in painting from Claremont Graduate. Wendell's work has been featured in solo exhibitions, including a face down in the sand at the edge of the sea at Public Gallery in London and spooky action at Shulamit Nazarian in Los Angeles. His group exhibitions span places like the Hammer Museum, the Chelsea Museum in New York, and the San Antonio Museum of Art in Texas. So look, whether you're already familiar with Wendell Gladstone or you're just discovering him here right now for the first time, his work is definitely worth my attention. I hope he's worth your attention as well. We got two more artists to talk about. The next I wanna get into is Bianca Walker, who is an emerging artist whose practice is deeply rooted in history. They were born in Berkeley, California in 1997. Bianca currently lives and works in New Orleans, Louisiana, one of my absolute favorite places. That's how I discovered her looking into artists that were in New Orleans at the time. Uh, I wanted to take a trip and uh, do a studio visit or actually go see her work, but I didn't have a chance to, to link with her and do that. Their work explores the history of colonization and the dichotomy between whiteness and other through this unique blends of primitive materials and traditional painting techniques. I believe I first encountered Bianca's work like two years ago and I immediately fell in love with her pen-like technique. I was really captivated by how she's interweaving and intertwining these stories of the past in a manner I had never really seen before, except perhaps maybe in a sketch. Her work feels like meticulously crafted perfected sketches to me, this scratchness and this rawness that's aligning with how you might imagine her depictions unfolding. Not in a completely clear or vivid way, but in a way that feels like a memory. It resonates as a beautiful, nostalgic memory. They grew up surrounded by vibrant street art with uh, their early experiences shaped by colorful, expressive murals that adorned the community. 
However, gentrification, as it does, erase these cultural landscapes and it created this lasting, uh, this lasting impact on her vision. They eventually went to Louisiana where they kind of immersed themselves in black history at Grambling University. It was there they began to um, just explore this drip painting like um, technique that was a reflection of her street art influences. Many of their pieces are inspired by open use archival photographs, which they are incorporating into their paintings to activate this history they see as great. This archival energy and contemporary techniques is creating this powerful dialogue between past and present, and it's highlighting the complexities and the sustainability between relationships broken by colonization. The use of these simple primitive materials in her work is emphasizing the connections to the earth and is challenging the notions that living harmoniously with this environment is uncivilized. Each of these bold dynamic lines and brilliant colors creating this sense of movement and energy that's drawing the viewer and drawing me in. The layered textures and organic shapes in their work is inviting their viewers to engage both physically and emotionally with the works, creating this tactile experience that's enhancing the storytelling. Bianca's theme revolves around the architecture of racism, the impact of colonization, and the resilience of marginalized communities by blending traditional and contemporary techniques they're fighting against the, the loss of histories and cultures, preserving the stories of those who have been overlooked or erased. Their work is challenging viewers to confront the realities of racism, of misogyny, of homophobia, and gentrification, and to recognize the enduring struggle and the beauty of Black identities. Throughout their journey, Bianca has embraced that struggle and the challenges faced by marginalized community. You see their art as a way to reflect the broader struggle of black people, queer people, and other minorities. The emotional depth of their work invites the viewer to engage with that history and that ongoing impact of systematic oppression. It's like she's inviting you to live in the wake of this systematic oppression. Through their paintings, Bianca is challenging the presumption that living harmoniously within the environment is uncivilized. Bianca Walker's career includes solo shows like Stay at Jack Ford uh, Gallery in 2023 and participation in group exhibitions such as On the Word to Basil at Lauren Ga Gallery, Perspectives at Think Space Projects, which I'm a fan of, and Masterpiece 3 at um, The Band of Vices, which I'm also a fan of in 2022. As an emerging artist, Bianca Walker is undoubtedly making an uh, impact on the, on the art world and beyond. Collectors out there, collectors, don't forget to mark your calendar for my free webinar on the introduction to art collecting, which is happening on September 18th, 2024. The details are in my description below. Also, go ahead and download that Essential Collectors Checklist. It's going to help you guys keep it with you. If you're trying to figure out if you should buy specific works, what you need to consider when you're buying these works, it walks you through those things. Next, and lastly, but surely not leastly, we're going to move on to Amanda Baldwin. I'm actually really excited to talk about Amanda Baldwin. It's a real world of Amanda Baldwin. An artist whose work really captivated my attention and inspired me. I know that these works are amazing to see in person. I wish I would have already had the chance to see them. Hopefully I can make a chance and create space to make sure I have time to see her work at some point, especially the ones that are larger scale. Seattle, Washington in 1984, and she now lives in Queens, New York with a BFA from the University of Washington and an MFA from um, Virginia Commonsworth University. Amanda Baldwin's artistic journey has been both impressive and inspiring. She is currently in the prime of her career, making really, really great waves in the contemporary art scene. Now, I'm naturally drawn to colors that feel inverted and to landscape worlds. Not necessarily landscape, but when an artist is creating a world of landscapes, it does something for me, I need that. But I'm drawn to those works that that evoke a sense of place. I appreciate how she's constructing her work compositionally, which I feel feels like both stenciled and collage works. Her work reminds me of Narnia in a way, not in the literal sense, but in the way that it transports you or transports me to a different and another world, a dreamy psychedelic world. I love that when I'm looking at her work, I feel like I'm stepping into this totally, completely different realm. Amanda Baldwin's work immediately grabs you with its bold colors and this otherworldly and enchanting landscape. 
she has this incredible ability to transform everyday objects and natural elements uh, into these abstract forms that evoke this sense of wonder and a sense of intrigue. The way she's manipulating shapes and color is inviting us to explore a world that blurs the line between reality and imagination, sparking emotions from curiosity to nostalgia. Her technique is meticulous. Amanda start, starts by isolating each element within her composition, morphing objects like vases, trees, and mountains into these abstract versions of themselves. This approach creates a beautiful balance between representation and abstraction, making the familiar seem new and exciting. Her paintings often feature rhythmic interplay between organic and inorganic forms, producing these patterns that are both recognizable and uniquely clearly Amanda's. The themes in Amanda Baldwin's work revolve around nature, transformation, and perception. She's deconstructing and reassembling these elements of the natural world, challenging how we perceive reality. Her landscapes are still life compositions are more than just depictions. They're commentaries on how we see and interpret our surroundings. The exploration adds depth to her work, making each work a dialogue between Amanda and us, the viewers. Her unique style and her approach has not gone unnoticed. Her work is highly appreciated in the contemporary art world. She's had solo exhibitions in places like Public Gallery in London and Hesse Flat Low in New York and has participated in numerous group exhibitions. The growing recognition expects her high valuation of her work within this art market. As a mid-career artist, Amanda Baldwin has her acclaim is steadily rising and solidifying her reputation. Her significance is, is beginning to be amazing and profound. By blending these traditional painting techniques with modern abstractions, she's honoring the past by pushing these genres into new, unexplored territories. This innovative approach places her as a vital voice in contemporary art, contributing to the ongoing dialogue about perception, reality, and artistic expression. Amanda is currently in a flourishing stage of her career, with her work featured in several collections, including the University of Washington, the Long Museum in Shanghai, and the Palm Springs Arts Museum. This well-established presence is speaking volumes about her talent, her influence, and as she continues to explore new themes and techniques, Amanda Baldwin's contributions to this contemporary space will undoubtedly in my opinion, remain um, significant and influential. I'm really excited to see more of her work. And there you guys have it. Five incredible artists who are doing their thing in my little view of the art world right now. I hope this video has inspired you to explore their works a little bit further and perhaps even adding their one of their works to your collection, uh, exploring their practice a little bit more. I'm really happy to dig more into these artists for you. Uh, just get in touch. We can do some private consulting. Um, as a special resource, I've created a downloadable collector's checklist that you can find in the description below. This checklist is going to help you. It's going to help guide you through the process of evaluating um, your process of e purchasing art, making sure that you are confident in your collecting decisions. Don't forget to check out my Patreon where we get deep into Aaliyah Bonet, breaking down her market presence as much as I can as well as a curated of five different artists I think you should pay attention to. Plus, like I said, I'll be hosting a free webinar on introduction to our collecting on September 18th, 2024, between 7 and 7.30 p.m. That's Eastern time. If you're looking for more in-depth knowledge, you can also join my masterclass, Mastering uh, Your Intro to Art Collection, uh, which are simple strategies for new collectors on October 19th. All of the links are in the description, so check that out. If you have enjoyed this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Um, share your thoughts in the comments below. I love to hear what you think, the artists that you're excited about. If I didn't mention an artist that you're excited about and you want me to go over them, please let me know. Let me know who these artists are. Oh, and before I forget, collectors, if you have not read How to Collect Art by Ragnus Resch, make sure you purchase that book and give it a read. I really enjoyed reading it. The link to purchase it is also in the link in my description. Also, I'll be going over the entire book in my Patreon over the next few months, chapter by chapter as well. So check that out as well. Um, 
I will see you guys in the next video. This is Dear Glory. I'm Mariah Reese. I hope you enjoy.